right, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Weekly Walkthrough with Alex and Graham. I'm your host, Alex the Captain, from the Max Sports Connection podcast, part of the Varsity Podcast Network, presented by Learfield. That's never not going to be a mouthful. But I'm here, as always, with Graham and uh, the voice of our Mac Baseball Rundown. Graham, welcome back to the show. What an exciting week one we had for this segment. Uh, Miami, Cincinnati, not the result I think you hoped for. I, definitely not the result I hope for as a Mac fan, but Cincinnati took that one away, got an 11-point victory at Jaeger Stadium for what might be the final time in this rivalry. Well, that's right. You uh, you got your prediction was correct. Cincinnati walked out with the win there, and uh, they take back home that bell. Um, yeah, certainly not the result I was hoping for, but um, – you know, it's uh, it's kind of an historic rivalry between Cincinnati and Miami, and uh, and now Cincinnati has the edge there. Uh, they're one game up in the overall series, which is wild to me. How how long that series has been going on? Cincinnati is one game up. It's pretty pretty incredible, and again, a great rivalry series. This game will have what is its scheduled final game in 2026 down at Paycor Stadium, uh, the old Paul Brown Stadium, that where the Bengals play. That game will be the final game that is scheduled in 2026. And Miami's going to yeah. tr- obviously do everything they can to bring that bell back home. And, well, and, and funny enough, for right. the but, series. Yeah, like it's just but, wild to think about. But what's up with it? Why no 2025 game? So I'm not entirely sure of all the details. But from what I understand, the athletic department at Miami, they when they scheduled this new arrangement, they would play a game at UC a game at Paycor, a game at Jaeger, and then a game at Paycor. Like, so it was just like basically three games in Cincinnati, one game in Oxford, but every other game at, at, at I believe at Paul Brown was going to be a Miami home game. So Miami got to keep the gate. Miami got to, you know, all that stuff. So I think financially it was, a, it was a good move, but it's always tough when, when you're, when you're playing, Technically, yes, you're Miami, you're three, three home games or you get to be the home team, but you're playing essentially three road games for one true home game. And again, the money is great. You know, that was a big opportunity for Miami and Cincinnati to play those games at Paul Brown and to have that big NFL stadium. But to me, it feels like you're still spending the money on moving all the equipment down to Cincinnati. You're every single time for three, uh, three to one, essentially. I personally wasn't a fan. I know that many um, fans also weren't the biggest fan. I know Coach Chuck Martin was a big fan. He liked the you know the fact that they got to play at Paycor, but it sounds like there there were some issues. Uh, Coach Chuck Martin made some comments last year after beating Cincinnati, uh, something about, and, and I and I'm paraphrasing his quote, but he said something to the effect of, you know, I was told that if we beat a Big Twelve team on the road, we're supposed to get a check for a million dollars. Um, so I hope that they have the check on, uh, our athletic director's desk by Monday. And that kind of kicked up some bad blood Miami joining the new conference, uh, or Cincinnati joining the new conference kind of created a little bit of a schedule shift. They started dropping non-con games and it just, it started to make less and less sense to continue this rivalry for the almighty dollar. And frankly, I'm not the biggest fan. I'm hoping they can figure out a time to kind of resume this rivalry series, but Cincinnati's trying to move on to bigger and better things and money, money speaks in a, in the yeah, world of I, I college mean, football. That now. was, that was my guess about the, the cause of, of the end of the rivalry. I was just curious why that, why that, you know, we, we had the game in 2024, the next game scheduled in 2026. seems like there's no game on the books for 2025 right now. That seems funny to me. Um, that, that book or that game, I believe was dropped. Uh, actually Cincinnati, Miami didn't do this one, but Bowling Green will be traveling to Cincinnati this next year. So it looks like they got slotted out for the Falcons. So they still keep a Mac team on the, on the schedule, but it's going to be a different Mac team and not a rivalry. And Bowling Green is always drawn to uh, Kentucky because, uh, you know, Bowling Green, Kentucky, uh, speaking of Kentucky missed well, opportunity for a great rivalry, by the way, <laughs> Speaking of Kentucky, that's our game of the week this week. We've got the Bobcats taking on the Wildcats, the Bobcats of Ohio taking on the Kentucky Wildcats, and uh, uh, very different weeks they both had this last week. Uh, Kentucky came up one point short of beating the Georgia Bulldogs, 
Then uh, number one team in the country, Georgia Bulldogs. Then number one team in the country, which I mean, what an incredible effort. I mean, you know, Kentucky looked excellent in that game, uh, capitalized on a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of uh, Georgia mistakes. Georgia figured out a way that like they seem to do, figured out a way to win that in the end. Uh, whereas the Bobcats, they got a nice win at home against an FCS school, uh, Robert Mor- or Morgan State. And two different games, two different results uh, in terms of how the games were played, but they both resulted in, you know, in a result. And now we are here as these two teams prepare to match up and meet up in Kentucky at Kroger Field. Talk to me about this Kentucky team. Who should we be aware of? Well, I, I I think there's there's a lot that we should know about Kentucky, but I, I did want to point out here the um you know Ohio won last week. The Bobcats they have did. a win last week, and we almost it almost seems like Kentucky had the better week. And I'm, I'm sure they yeah. wouldn't say that. That's the uh, you know I, I know I heard Mark Stoops after the game coming out and saying the uh, you know we expected that we would ha- we had a chance to win and we didn't come away with the victory. Um, mm-hmm. So they're not taking this as a moral victory. You know, I, I love to say that there's no such thing as moral victories. Um, yep. The uh, so I, you know, I know that uh, that Kentucky is not taking it that way, but I think, you know, as college football fans, we do kind of look at that and go, wow, like Kentucky had a great week. You know, losing mm-hmm. by one to George is a big deal. Ohio had a win last week and uh, yep. I feel like Kentucky had a better week. I'm sure they well, wouldn't say that, but uh, that's how I feel. So I, I, you know, and I'll, and I'll kind of talk about that Ohio win last week. I mean, again, it wasn't against an FCS program against Morgan state defense looked great, uh, came out, you know, held them to two field goals on the game offense. They played okay. Parker Navarro didn't have his best game. Uh, he still had a touchdown. He still had a, I think 160 plus yards, The three interceptions were a little concerning, but I think he's going to be fine. The, it, it feels like it's one of those games that just, you maybe Ohio might have been overlooking them a little bit, knowing who was up next on the schedule. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm trying not to read too much into these results, only because we saw what Ohio did to South Alabama, got the win at home against a good South Alabama team. And, uh, and the same South Alabama team, by the way, who dismantled Eastern Michigan in the 68 Ventures Bowl. Uh, but then we also saw Ohio go on the road and play really good against what's turning out to be a quality Syracuse team. Yeah, I mean, Syracuse, it seems like they have years where they are just garbage, uh, and this doesn't seem to be one of them. Uh, this is one of those years when Syracuse is, is fielding a good team, uh, and that was a hard-fought battle, uh, You know, ultimately a loss for the Bobcats, but a uh, a battle that um, I, I think both teams looked uh, looked like quality teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that that's Ohio's only loss. Uh, you know, on the Kentucky side, um, a couple of losses to uh, – to, uh, we talked about Georgia – um, but they also lost to to South Carolina, a quality South Carolina team. Um, so even sitting at one and two, I have Kentucky as certainly the stronger team here. And I know that's not surprising anyone. We're talking about a, a Mac SEC matchup. But as we know from last week, Mac SEC matchups don't always go the SEC's way. Um, you know, shout out to the uh, Toledo Rockets taking down Mississippi State last week. Um, and and not by uh, not by a close margin. This was not Georgia winning by one. This was uh, the Rockets really walking away with a uh, just a, a solid beating of Mississippi State. <laughs> but uh, I, I think this week it's, it's got to be the the Wildcats. Uh, this line opened at, at minus eighteen in favor of Kentucky. Uh, now it's up to minus twenty. Uh, clearly, the uh, the betters are on the side of the Wildcats. Um, I love the fact that this is a cat fight. We got Bobcats versus Wildcats. <laughs> That's the uh, I think they need a cat fight trophy. Um, you know when it when it comes to baseball, I'm uh, I'm really into uh, fights between the bird teams. I love it when the bird teams match up. But um, this one, uh, I like to see some, some cat matchups here. <laughs> Claws will definitely be out at Kroger Field this week. That's for sure. That's right. Also, another fun thing: we moved from Jaeger to Kroger this week. Um, we just are have all fields that end in G E R from now on, right? <laughs> hey, listen, if that's how we want to predict the rest of the season, I'm good with it. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that means Akron. Uh, we are we're not covering InfoCision uh, Stadium, uh, Suma Field. Yeah, so can't do Akron, can't do the Glass Bowl. Uh, yeah, I, we'll just roll with all the GERs for the rest of the season. We'll uh, we'll dive into that and we'll come back to you guys next week.
That's right. The uh, I wanted to do. I'm doing all kinds of shout outs here. We're not really diving into the Kentucky team, but one more shout out. The uh, uh, the whole Kentucky staff here um, is uh, especially starting with with Mark Stoops, but their whole coaching staff is is from Youngstown. Um, and uh, and Mark Stoops uh, representing the Youngstown Cardinal Mooney High School, who just would wax us when I was in high school, when, when we would uh, go and face them. Seemed like we always faced them in the first or second round of the playoffs, and they would just destroy us. They were a thorn in our side for many years, um, and uh, certainly a lot of uh, football talent out of the Youngstown area. Um, and so uh, not surprising to see this staff full of Youngstown guys. Uh, Kentucky had a... Um, has had a, a good season so far, despite two losses, um, mm-hmm. a, you know, a loss coming to South Carolina, a loss coming to Georgia. They had an interesting win over uh, Southern Miss uh, to open the year. This was the, I don't know if you remember this week one game, a uh, game supposed to be scheduled at 745. It gets delayed, doesn't start until 1005. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's a, de- a lightning delay at 1151. Finally, the game's called after midnight. Um, and uh, the game ended with, almost 10 minutes left in the third quarter. So wow. the uh, Kentucky still comes away 31 to nothing uh, in that game winning, but um, a game that uh, kind of an interesting way to, uh, to end a game. Um, Kentucky, the story here is, is the Kentucky defense. Um, they, they, we saw last week against a, a Georgia offense that's ranked in the top 10. Um, they, uh, and, and they stepped up. Uh, held Georgia to 13 points. Um, this defense is only allowing 14.7 points a game. They're only allowing uh, 215 yards a game. That's good for ninth in the country. Uh, passing yards, 153 per game. And, and rushing yards, only 62 per game. That's good for eighth in the country. Th- this is a heck of a defense the Wildcats have. Um, offense, not so great. Uh, their offense sits uh, right around it. S&P Plus has them ranked at 56. Um, but uh, this Kentucky team is a is a solid squad, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and the, the guys that I like on the uh, Kentucky defense, uh, Deion Walker is uh, six foot six, three hundred forty pounds, defensive tackle who has uh, ha- had the same number of tackles as their their leading tackler um, in the uh, at, at linebacker last year. Also has numbers, you know, tackles for loss, sack numbers that make him look like a defensive end uh, playing from that defensive tackle position, which uh, so often is just big guys filling holes. Uh, this is a guy who really makes a lot happen uh, up front for this uh, Kentucky defense. And um, and and that is just, um, that's kind of how this Kentucky defense works. A few studs. Um, speaking of those linebackers, Derek Jackson um, led the uh, the team last week with 15 tackles. And um, sorry, 15 tackles on the season, rather. <laughs> but um, he's uh, he's been doing a great job. He's led UK in tackles uh, for each of the last two seasons. Uh, safety Zion Childress also has 15 tackles, and he leads the team in tackles for loss with five, uh, which is interesting to see from the uh, the safety position. Um, so uh, you know, this is a this is a Wildcats team that has has strong bodies in and. Defensive line, a linebacker, back in the DBs. Uh, the whole defense has uh, has some studs to it, and uh, and really, I think that's going to be the difference in this game. Is is this is a, a home game for Kentucky, and uh, and this defense is going to stand strong against uh, Ohio's offense. See, I think it's interesting that this is a home game uh, for Kentucky. You're, I mean, right now Kentucky's on a two game losing streak against quality SEC opponents, and. For me, when I look at when I look at their schedule, so I've got their schedule pulled up right now. When I look at their schedule, so they've already started conference play. You're currently 0-2 in the SEC, likely not going to qualify qualify for the SEC championship, just knowing who else is in this conference. You've got Tennessee, you've got Georgia, you've got Alabama. I mean, the the classic names that come up as potential favorites for this conference. But is there a world in which you're overlooking this Ohio team because you now have to travel to Ole Miss the week after? I think there is. And I think that what we're looking at for this game, this this to me feels like a recipe for success for Ohio. This is, this is a trap game. Now, I think Toledo put the Southeastern Conference on notice last week. So they didn't do they didn't do Ohio any favors. They didn't do Bowling Green any favors. Um, 
but they didn't do, I believe, Akron any favors. They're playing South Carolina this week. So no favors done for the MAC against the SEC, thanks to what Toledo, the dismantling they did to Mississippi State. But this, to me, feels like it has all the workings of a trap game because you're not really thinking about this Ohio game. It doesn't mean anything to you. You're more worried about prepping for Ole Miss on the road in a week. And the number that I want to point out as to why I think Ohio has a has a shot at this. Parker Navarro has two touchdowns, four picks on the year. He has 547 passing yards. But when it comes to rushing this year, the Bobcats rank third in the Mid-American Conference in rushing yards. They are putting up 200 rushing yards a game on opponents. Now, they put up 200 on Syracuse, so it's not like they were just doing this to FCS or to group of five teams. They put up 200 rushing yards on a Syracuse team who, again, currently undefeated and ranked. I think that that's something worth considering. Anthony Tyus has anchored that backfield, and he has just looked like an absolute stud. He had 203 yards, two touchdowns in that game, and he has continued this, and I'm pulling up his numbers right here, but... On the season, he has 50 carries, 367 yards, four scores. He is averaging a blistering 7.5 yards a carry. I think he is the difference maker that Kentucky is going to have. Like, if you lose him, I think there's a real shot Kentucky loses the game. Ohio was rated by the transfer portal a year ago, by graduation a year ago. Everybody counted them out. They have already looked far better than people are giving them credit for. And I would not be shocked to see them come into Kroger field. They've already won at Kentucky and they've done it this century. It's not, they're not all wins that have been tucked away from the 1970s. No, they've done it actually 20 years ago, almost to the day. This is a team who I think Ohio is hungry. They're eager to prove that they're, that they're still a good team despite all of those losses. And I think you catch a Southeastern school at the right time, as they're starting to get into conference play, fighting for a spot in the championship, fighting for a playoff spot, you catch this team at the right time that you could trip up Kentucky at home. I think you're coming at this from, you know, we were talking about a, a 2004 victory. Let's not forget the Mac in the early 2000s was a, was the class of the group of five. Uh, this, this was a conference with multiple strong football programs, especially and uh, and and it's just not that conference anymore. Um, now, you know, as much as we love the MAC, we have to admit that it, the conference is not as strong as it was in the early 2000s. And and this argument that they're going to come into Kentucky and they're going to get a win like they did 20 years ago. Well, Alex, 20 years ago was 20 years ago. I can uh, I can do the math. I got a calendar behind me. We could flip back some pages. But uh, I think you'll find 20 years is 20 years is 20 years. And uh, these Kentucky Wildcats. Um, came out last week against a solid rushing attack from the uh, the Georgia Dogs, and um, they didn't bend. This is the this uh, like I said, the eighth best rushing defense in the country. They're only allowing 62 yards on the ground per game. This is a, a team that's prepared to handle the rushing attack from the Bobcats, uh, and and I can't imagine they're going to struggle um, with the uh, with containing the run. And I, and I think that's interesting and I think that's fair, right? It's the, the, they've played two sec schools. They've played a Southern miss who for all intents and purposes, one and two, not great, but the, I mean, I'll give you that. I'll, I I'm happy to give you that, but I think that's what we're going to see. It's going to be which strength stands out right now. Ohio is relying on Parker Navarro, a bowl winner uh, from two years ago, the uh, Arizona barstool bowl. But I think we're going to have to see exactly how good this Ohio offensive line can stand up. I'm concerned about Parker Navarro's ability to throw and they're going to have to throw. Let's just, let's call it what it is. But if they can mix it up, Tim Alvin has posted multiple 10 win seasons since taking over. I would not be surprised to see him game plan and scheme against this. He's done and gone and gotten wins over power five opponents. This, this isn't something new for him. He's done it. We've seen him do it since taking over for Frank Solich. I, I don't like that it's on the road, but that's another story for another time. I like Ohio in this one because this defense, they've played they've played some solid football. I mean, they, I, last week, I think for me, was it was a tune-up, right? This is a chance to, hey, now we can work on fundamentals. Now we can tweak a few things here. We can change a few things here. 
And they, they got to run essentially a glorified practice. You give up a field goal in each half, you're doing you're doing your job. Yes, it's an FCS opponent. I get that. No disrespect to Morgan State. But you're holding them to, to nothing. You're holding them to less than 200 total yards over the course of an entire game. This is a team who's going to be well-rested. I think that's another, that's another critical component. This Ohio team comparatively is going to be well-rested versus this Kentucky team who was just in a defensive bloodbath. They are exhausted. They are whipped. And I think and they are Ohio's- hungry. A team who, who missed out on a victory by one point is hungry, Alex. And it's, it's thank goodness they play at Kroger Field because there are plenty of groceries that they can walk home with, including the lunches that were packed by the Ohio Bobcats. That's the, uh, the Bobcats are going to walk in there. They're going to leave without their lunches because Kentucky's getting ready to eat them. Let's not forget this Kentucky team also has an offense. They don't just have a defense. They actually play both sides of the ball here in Kentucky. Here in Kentucky. Look are you sure talking- about that? Because <laughs> they didn't put up too many points last week. They didn't put up too many points. But remember, Kentucky has one of the top return men in the country for, on special teams with uh, with Barry and Brown. They're, uh, they're currently, they are seven for seven on field goals. Uh, Alex Rayner uh, has gone 17 for 18 of field goals and 52 of 53 in extra points in his career at Kentucky. Uh, so far this season, he is a perfect seven for seven on field goals. The special teams unit is great. And this offense is nothing to sneeze at. We've got uh, Demi Sumo Kargbe, uh, which is a name I don't want to say more than once, who was uh, <laughs> leading the Cats in uh, rushing with 227 yards, averaging not quite that 7.5 per carry you were talking about, but a, a respectable 4.8 per carry. He's coming off a career-high 98 hard-earned yards in the Georgia game. That's almost a hundo against these uh, Georgia Bulldogs, who we know are no slouch on defense themselves. Of course, uh, freshman Jason Patterson is averaging 5.2 yards per attempt. He's got 73 yards in the year. And uh, the Wildcats, are, that's not all. <laughs> They're waiting on Chip Trainum, who is a uh, Ohio State transfer, who uh, right now is out indefinitely with an injury. But this is a, a rushing attack from Kentucky that is not only strong, but has plenty of guys ready to step up if this Ohio defense does wear out the rushing attack. Also, let's not forget, Kentucky has a passing attack. Brock Vandegrift starting at QB. He's a UGA grant transfer, which uh, is an interesting sort of revenge game against Georgia last week. He's 29 for 55 for 313 yards over three games, throwing three passing touchdowns. That's not great numbers if you compare it to the, uh, especially to the Ohio offense. But this is a Kentucky receiver room who, who now has three receivers who each had at least a thousand yards last year, uh, including the aforementioned Barry and Brown. Uh, they also have Dane key and then transfer Jamori Macklin who had over a thousand yards at North Texas last year. Um, so the, the hardest thing for Vandegrift to figure out is, is how to distribute this ball amongst these three studs at wide receiver. I think Ohio is going to have a tough time, whether they lock down the run or they lock down the pass uh, it's going to be picking your poison. Well, I think you, you talk about locking down the run, locking down the pass. You're right. Ohio is going to have to do everything they can to to show, you know, disguised blitzes, dis, you know, whatever they're going to have to do. They're going to have to do it. But I don't think, you know, you talk about the Kentucky offense and the Kentucky defense. I think that Coleman Owen, the uh, the wide receiver for Ohio, he is leading this team. He's averaging 100 yards a game. This is this is the guy that they're going to have to lock down for Kentucky. You know, you Parker Navarro has done just an incredible job trying to re-earn this starting job. You know, he lost it again um, last year after the bowl game. And to uh, Curtis Rourke, who we all know the legend of Curtis Rourke. We all know the legend of his brother. Uh, the, these these Rourke, these Canadian Rourkes have been excellent <laughs> for the Bobcats. But we're in a new regime. Parker Navarro, I think he's he's starting to figure it out. You know, last week was not great. Last week, I I don't I don't put a lot of weight into that because that was an opportunity for him to kind of really we're experimenting, we're learning different things. But I think if you got guys like Coleman Owen, who is the third best receiver in the Mid American Conference this year, behind guys like not Jawan Newton not uh, Junior Vandeross out of Toledo, who both had excellent games a week ago. No, behind Cade McDonald, 
the Miami superstar, and Harold Fana Jr., the tight end out of Bowling Green, the Bowling Green superstar. This is a guy that if they lose him, that's fine because then they've got then that gives Ohio every opportunity to go down and try to win this thing. But if they can contain him, they now also have to worry about containing the ground game. And I think when you combine these two, as well as Chase Hendricks, the sophomore wide receiver, who's done an excellent job, he's one of the top 20 receivers in the Mid-American Conference. That is a solid one-two duo. Chase Hendricks, of course, being the, the, uh, the younger, the underclassman in this situation. But he's had a great year as well. I've got his numbers right here. He's he's averaging 35 yards a game. He's already got a touchdown. He's he's playing the part of big time wide receiver after a year of not getting to do so. This is a whole new offense. This is yes, you've got a little bit of film on this Ohio team, but I don't think that the experience that is that Kentucky is going to see. I, I think that Ohio has an advantage just purely off of scouting because there's far more film on a lot of this team. Most of this Ohio team is young. There's not a lot of film. You don't know what they're all capable of. And I think that gives Ohio the advantage. But I also think you need to mention Parker Titsworth on the offensive line. If you root against a guy like that, I'm sorry. You're just you're just rooting for the wrong team. <laughs> That's the uh... shout out Parker Titsworth, by the way. Big fan of Parker Titsworth, huh? That's uh, good old number sixty nine. Gotta love that. Well, I I think the thing we want to point out here is these are both two defense heavy squads. Both teams mm -hmm. came into the year uh, with folks talking about their defense, how good their defense was going to be, uh, and both teams have have really showed up so far. Uh, Kentucky, obviously top 10 in the country um, in terms of uh, defense, in terms especially in terms of their rushing defense. Um, but uh, but Ohio is no slouch either. But I think we talked about this last week when we talked about Cincinnati and Miami, two teams also who we thought it was going to be a defensive battle. And it came down to because both teams have great defenses. It came down to who had the better offense. And Cincinnati just had a much better offense last week. I think that's going to be the same thing here. Kentucky has a much better offense than this Ohio Bobcats team. Uh, this Bobcats team, no slouch on defense, but they are giving up 344 yards a game, including 239 yards through the air. I, I expect Kentucky to take advantage of that. They're going to take advantage uh, with their passing attack. We're going to see this Kentucky passing attack open up. Um, and and really, I, I think this is a walk away. It's not hard to, uh, to pick Kentucky in this one. Um, I think we talked about the line earlier, opened at minus 18, now up to minus 20. Mm -hmm. Um and I expect Kentucky to handle every bit of that line. I, I don't expect the Bobcats to cover. Uh, this is UK's game. All right. What's your final score prediction for this one? Final score for this one is we're going to go Kentucky 34, Miami 13. I'm sorry. Who are they playing? Not Miami. They're, they're not Miami playing already Miami. Played That's last right. Week. <laughs> That's right. I don't. I don't want to offend any Bobcats because I know they would hate to be identified as Red Hawks. That's uh, no, true. I, that's I can. The... I can tell you that is one hundred percent true. <laughs> so, uh, in, in reality, uh, <laughs> Kentucky thirty-four, uh, Ohio thirteen. <laughs> okay. So you do have you do have Kentucky covering, uh, not by much, but they. I mean, hey, the the one point all it takes to win is Kentucky found out a week ago. Um, I I like I like this Ohio offense, I think that they're not getting enough credit now to in fairness, I think Kentucky is a really solid defense. Um, I am concerned about what Ohio brings to the table defensively, especially through the air, as you mentioned, almost 250 yards a game. They're surrendering to me. I still, I, I I'd never say never, right? Toledo is a 10 and a half point underdog a week ago to Mississippi state. And then they came out and dismantled them by 24. I don't think that this is that kind of game, but I also don't think that it's impossible to think that this game could be a lot closer and really more uncomfortable for Kentucky fans than they want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and say Bobcats probably lose this. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you on this one, but I think the Bobcats are going to, it's going to be a game in the fourth quarter. Kentucky's going to need some late game heroics to pull this one out. And it's only going to be a one score game. I'm going to go Kentucky 31 Bobcats. 24. Wow. Closer game. Uh, I think Kentucky covers this one, but um, certainly a game to tune into uh, a game. That's going to be on uh, 1245 
Um, and I, I believe this one is going to be on the SEC network. So if you get the Correct. SEC network, you'll be able to uh, to watch this game. Correct. Well, let's let's uh, go ahead and just quickly touch on each of the rest of the games in the Mid American Conference this week. Plenty of great action. Uh, Ball State and Central Michigan are kicking off conference play. First conference play of the year or conference game of the year. One o'clock over at Kelly Shorts in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. It is Central Michigan by minus six and a half. Central Michigan, the favorite. Who are you taking? Ball State Central. Uh, you know, Central Michigan being at home, uh, I think the uh, the Chippewas um, get that little home field advantage. Um, but uh, you know what? I, I talked about I like bird teams. I'm going to take the birds in this one. Ball State walks away victorious. All right. Ball State with the win there. All right. We move down to St. Francis, PA, who came into Dick Stadium a couple weeks ago. And the red flashes beat the golden flashes. Uh, are we thinking it's the same story here where they go up to the factory in Ipsy and beat the Eagles of Eastern Michigan, another bird team? That's the uh, we're going all birds today. We're going all birds. Uh, this one's all Eagles. Um, Kent State had no business uh, losing to St. Francis. Um, and Kent State does what Kent State has done for the past few years. Uh, which is just find new ways to disappoint us Mac fans each week. Um, I can't imagine that uh, the factory at Eastern Michigan is going to turn out such a poor product. They've got quality control at that factory, don't you know, Alex? Uh, the Eagles come away with a victory in this one. Uh, I don't know that they're going to cover the 24-point spread, uh, but they are They are going to walk away with the victory. No OSHA, viola- no OSHA violations in Washtenaw County this weekend. Uh, before we get into the rest of the schedule, I do want to talk to you about the violations you're committing by not downloading the Varsity Network app, where you can listen to podcasts like mine and hundreds of live sports broadcasts from all across the country. You want to listen to the Bobcats go bring home a victory. They're going to stand up and cheer on the road in Kentucky. You can download the Varsity Network app and listen to that game live. You want to listen to the Ball State Cardinals fly up and clip the wings of the Chippewas? That doesn't sound right because Chippewas don't have wings. You can do that on the Varsity Network app. You want to listen to this show? Listen to my ramblings. You want to listen to Graham's great words of wisdom and advice? You can do that all on the Varsity Network app for free in the Apple Play Store, Apple Apple Store, and the Google Play Store. We're not uh, we're not combining Apple and Android here, folks. But again, that is a free app. You can download it. It is the Varsity Network app available for free in the Apple Store, the Google Play Store, presented by Learfield. Download it today, where you can listen to a bunch of great content. Lots of great content creators, lots of sports. Download it today. You will not regret it. You can mark your favorites. An incredible app. I I love listening to it. Not even just for my show. There's some other great podcasters out there, group of five guys being one of them that are on this. It is a big, big effort. You guys won't be disappointed. You can save your favorite teams. You can save your favorite sports. You can save your favorite podcast all in the app. You just create an account, download it. Free to free to run. You can you can have it on the go. Very worth it. Trust me when I say download the Varsity Network app today. Yeah, we love that Varsity Network app. We do. We do. And uh, like I said, you get to hear my voice. Maybe you don't want to. Maybe that actually is a reason for you to not download the app. But listen to other people's voices. Well, yeah, the good news is that Varsity Network app has plenty of other voices if you don't like listening to ours. (laughs) (laughs) So let's uh, move on here. Another bird team. Uh, I mean, you're going all birds, so I don't think I should ask you, but Kent State at number 10, Penn State. Uh, this game at 3.30 on the Big Ten Network in Happy Valley, Penn State by minus 49. Oof. Well, see, that's the uh, that's what we learned about this Kent State squad is that their weakness is every other football team on the planet, uh, but maybe <laughs> especially football teams from Pennsylvania, uh, Penn State. Um, they're a solid squad this year that they, they are, they're no slouch. There's a reason they're ranked number 10 in the country. Uh, this is an easy win for Penn state. Um, and normally a, a 49 point spread, I would say the Mac team covers, but, um, absolutely not. Penn state wins by 49 at least. Kent state gave up almost 49 in the first quarter last week in the, in their dismantling, at the hands of Tennessee, losing that one 71 to nothing. Yeah, I, I'm with you on this one. Unfortunately, Penn State gets it done at home after their scare against Bowling Green a couple weeks ago. They they take care of business at home. Miami, Ohio at number 17, Notre Dame. It's on the road. NBC, 330 kickoff at Notre Dame Stadium. Notre Dame by 28. 
I mean, this gosh, these, interesting. These, these Mac Notre Dame matchups are, have become much CTV after the Huskies took care of Notre Dame earlier this year. Um, and, and I think Mac teams are recognizing that uh, taking down Notre Dame might be your shot at uh, getting ranked in the top 25. Uh, I, I watched that Miami game last week. I don't think they have enough uh, to take down Notre Dame. Um, but uh, but I, I don't think Notre Dame covers the spread. This is, this is a, a minus 28. Um, I think the uh, I think the Red Hawks are, are a little bit better than that minus 28 spread. Uh, Notre Dame still walks out with a victory. All right. So moving on, we've got Buffalo at Northern Illinois. Sorry, Buffalo at number 23, Northern Illinois. That's right. Their That's first Matt game of the year. <laughs> Don't, yeah, I can't forget that 23. Uh, Northern Illinois at home defending their recent ranking. Uh, they had a bye last week, which probably boded well for them. But the line is Northern Illinois at home by 13 and a half. I like this game. I, I thought Buffalo looked really good against UMass. Northern Illinois got an extra week to rest and kind of, hey, we're not we're not going to have that hangover game after getting ranked. Feels like a feels like a good opportunity for the Huskies at home. Yeah, I I think we saw Buffalo last year. We saw these Bulls and come out and and look not like the Buffalo teams that we've seen in the past. Towards the end of the year, they started to look a little bit more like like uh, the Buffalo of old. Uh, but it was kind of an off year uh, for the Bulls last year. Uh, I think they've bounced back. Uh, like you mentioned that UMass game. Uh, I think that's a big one where they they looked kind of more themselves than they did over the entire campaign last year. Uh, this one's going to be closer um, than I think anybody wants it to be. Uh, now that Northern Illinois is ranked, all of us MAC fans are rooting for them to go all the way now, uh, stay undefeated at least until that uh, that championship game, uh, or maybe they drop one to the Rockets on the way. Um, but uh, the uh, when it comes to this game, I do think Northern Illinois takes care of business, but I, I think this is a trap game. This looks exactly like the kind of games uh, where the Mac generally beats up on itself. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Buffalo walks out of them, this one with a victory. Still going to pick the Huskies. Speaking of Rockets, if you're not a Rocket, you're out of pocket. As the as the team said in their postgame talk, their celebration over Mississippi State, Toledo travels down to... Well, the other Bowling Green down in Western Kentucky, Bowling Green, Kentucky, Toledo. The this line has been all over the place. First, it was Western Kentucky. Now it's Toledo. Currently, line is Toledo two and a half on the road at Western Kentucky. A solid Group of Five versus Group of Five matchup. What do you think, Graham? We've got uh, we've got the almost looking like terrible towels. Is uh, I think that's what their uh, Western Kentucky's <laughs> thing is uh, versus well a variant of a bird, something that flies. What do you think? Yeah. So, I mean, that's uh, the Kentucky Hilltoppers, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking at their logo and I'm, I'm really struggling. It, it's, I mean, it's a hand whipping around a, a towel or a scarf maybe. Um, but um, I think it's clear that uh, Western Kentucky isn't quite sure what a Hilltopper is. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think the Rockets take care of business here. Um, it's hard to uh, to go into an opposing stadium uh, and come out victorious, um, but uh, Toledo did it last week. Now, now we're looking maybe there's a hangover here. You you come out and you uh, you beat up on, a, on an SEC opponent in Mississippi State. Um, there's a chance that, uh, that there's a hangover next week. Um, and Western Kentucky is no slouch, uh, but the Rockets are going to take care of business. Uh, I really do expect that uh, that Northern Illinois Toledo matchup later this year uh, to be the one that kind of defines who the powerhouse in the Mac is. And uh, neither team's going to lose until it comes to that. That's going to be an interesting game here in a couple of weeks, potentially top 25 matchup in mid October, something we haven't seen out of the mid American conference since 2003. So again, to that keep your eye on. Those early 2000 Mac teams were something else, man. The uh, moving on, we've got the Falcons, uh, the other Bowling Green, the the Mac Bowling Green, the Falcons out of Bowling Green, heading down to Texas A&M. It's a 7:30 kickoff on ESPN Plus down at Kyle Field, Texas Tech or Texas uh, A&M, 22 and a half point favorites. I've got to say, I'm a little bit impressed with these Falcons this year. They've come out and they've 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 come close. They, uh, they I mean, they really knocked off, almost knocked off Penn State a week ago or two weeks ago. I I think Bowling Green's going to cover the spread and probably cover it pretty easily. This is going to be a close matchup. I'm I'm tempted to uh, to go ahead and, and just pick AM here because they are a strong team. 
and uh, you know the, these Aggies have had a, a tough year so far, but um, they they have looked strong. Um, uh, and and I really, I do think they deserve that uh, that top twenty five ranking. That being said, like you said, the Bowling Green team who came into Penn State a couple of weeks ago and uh, and almost knocked off the Nittany Lions. Um, I'm going birds, all birds this week. Uh, the uh, the Bowling Green Falcons are going to walk away with an upset victory here. Uh, you heard it here first. Well, and then our last game of the week, Akron at South Carolina, the Zips versus the Gamecocks. You said all birds, so I know who you're picking in this one, but the line is South Carolina 27 and a half, 730 over on the U. I, I think South Carolina wins this one, and honestly, I think they cover it. Yeah, as an as an Akron boy, I want to see the Zips, uh, you know, bounce back like the kangaroos that they are. Um, but they uh, they just haven't had it. Um, I I can't imagine they 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 have looked tough this year. They've had some tough opponents, um, but uh, I can't imagine them um, doing anything against this uh, this South Carolina team. Again, a team we talked about who took down Kentucky. Um, this is uh, South Carolina walks away with the victory, uh, and they cover every bit of that twenty seven and a half. No rubber city rebound in football this year. They're going to keep that on the basketball court and that's going to do it for this week's max slate. Graham, any other words before we wrap this up? Uh, no words. Uh, excited to see the results of this uh, Kentucky Ohio game. Um, I do think the, uh, the wildcats are going to come out victorious, uh, but you know, uh, anything could happen in the Mac and, uh, and, you know, outside of the Mac in these non-conference matchups, um, I'm really get, look, looking forward to uh, Maction starting and uh, really even before that, watching these uh, these conference matchups between uh, Ball State and Central Michigan and uh, Buffalo and Northern Illinois. Those should be some great matchups. Well, guys, that's going to do it for us this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure that you guys are checking out content on Twitter X at the MSC podcast over on Instagram at the MSC podcast on TikTok, trying to be uh, some version of Martin Scorsese at the MSC podcast. You can also find this episode and all of my other episodes, wherever podcasts are available, including Spotify, Apple, Google, the varsity network app. And of course, YouTube at MSC podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week.